A $700 smartphone? Is it really possible to fit good hardware, reliable software and nice features into this crazy low budget? Here's the dodgy S97 Pro and you're right, let's inspect! I've always been stumped by the choice of name for this brand, Dodgy, which sounds like a dodgy phone or something, which I guess most people won't really perceive as something really serious. But it's a fact that since a number of years, Dodgy are making alternatives to the ultra-popular rugged phones Caterpillar, and this time they've changed a lot of things and dropped this $700 smartphone, which is the X97 Pro, and I guess there have been a lot of corners cut. The launch price has indeed been around $89, but fair to say that at the time I work on this video, its so-called other area version costs $109, while the European pricing is already up to $139. I'm mentioning about these price fluctuations because I hate seeing a video about something being dirt cheap and then experiencing the disappointment of discovering otherwise. For 50 bucks more, at around 190, you can order the latest Poco M5 or M5S models, and we're going to see in the end of the video where the Dodgy model can actually be a better choice. Unboxing has been nothing too pleasant, not that I expected much more than that for the price asked. There has been this weird smell coming out of the box, the smell of cheaply packed electronics, which is quite typical for certain products that are not made of quality parts. As I very often state, we're here because of the tech itself and not the package, but still, that's important to note. So, the phone, some instructions, a charger, which is quite a basic one, and a data cable. Standard package and even at this low price you still receive an inbox charger. The phone feels quite plastic, fairly big and thick body, some weird texture on the back, I'm pretty sure it's easily gonna scratch. There is a Type-C USB port, a speaker at the bottom, even a headphone jack. So by the looks, this is not too much different to its more expensive brothers. If you ask me about the specs, I would gladly share with you about the 6-inch HD display, the Helio G25 system on a chip with octa-core CPU, the RAM amount, which is 4GB, and the storage, which is 64GB, respectively. You can expand up to 256 gigs using a microSD card. 4200mAh battery, 12MP main camera, a 5MP front selfie camera, and this brick weighs 190 grams. So, beyond the numbers, uh, starting with the display, which probably here uh, on the video looks good, but it's actually a fairly poor solution with just 720p resolution, which compared to modern flagships, which are providing 1080p, obviously not on par with this pleasant, smooth scrolling and seeing vibrant colors. Just LCD technology, so outdoors, visibility is not going to be great. In terms of system on a chip, and this is the part which hosts the CPU, the GPU, memory and uh, storage, it's not too great, it's fairly outdated. Actually, the system on a chip here is featured in the Redmi 9A, which was released more than two years ago. And obviously everything there is outdated. Uh, old Wi-Fi standards, old Bluetooth protocols, everything is not so quick. As for the software, I really have serious concerns about it. But who knows, maybe if we check the performance, could be that it exceeds our expectations. Well, in short, not really. Starting with the basic daily tasks, like browsing websites and dealing with social media, it can be fine if you don't care too much about the skipped frames and the lags. The whole interface of the phone has a similar grade of snappiness, which, again, I'm not criticizing, it is impossible to tune it in much different way with the given hardware performance. This is obviously not a phone you can rely on for heavy gaming, but still even some more demanding titles like Rio Racing 3 are possible to run here. Or even some first-person shooters like Call of Duty. Not as pleasing as running these games on a flagship, but I know a bunch of people who enjoy a lot more the feeling of using something they wouldn't care about if dropped on the ground or accidentally drown inside water comes to remind us that no dodgy X97 Pro does not have waterproof rating. The 12 megapixel main camera features a Sony image sensor, kind of narrow field of view, and well, I was stunned by some of the camera features or the end results. They are at least disappointing. 
even some super cheap action cameras are going to be capable of providing better results in low light, but the daytime photos are maybe not that bad. Fair to say that if the camera is a priority to you, better check the alternatives. A second-hand 2021 mid-ranger is going to cost about the same money and will for sure provide much better camera capabilities. The battery life is also somewhat questionable. Funny enough, Doji used similar animation when connecting the charger to what happens on MIUI-powered smartphones like Xiaomi and Redmi. Sadly, there ain't the quick charging, so topping back to full takes more than an hour. If you're curious to hear about the speaker quality, here's a sample. Software-wise, well, if hardware sounds not too convincing, I doubt it's gonna get any better. Doji are famous for ditching software support too soon and focusing on new handsets only, so likely the Android 12 running on the X97 Pro at the release won't get any updates, or if it does, it probably is going to be just to address certain issues. Not that I stumbled across many of them, quite the opposite, looks like a very stable build. No bloatware, just the usual Android stock apps. There even is something called children's space, looks like Doji themselves expect this phone to end up in your kid's hands because of the price. Easy Launcher, Game Space and Security Center apps are the only unwanted and not stock for Android software pieces. Configuration items are more than just a few. You can fine-tune the display colors, switch between light or dark theme, adjust the navigation bar, the sound and many other things. I would say it's impressive to see that many possibilities and functions in such a basic phone, so that's a good thing. On the other hand, the software builds might be a concern. The phone passes Google's safety nets, it will work with Google Wallet and contactless payments, but as stated, knowing Doji for quite a while, better don't count on frequent software improvements. I'm gonna rate here the Doji X97 Pro based on what other similar products in this price niche provide. So, the lack of 5G, the fairly old system on a chip, the rather small battery for such a big housing and the lack of quick charging, plus the software concerns I already addressed. We can, of course, criticize a lot more than that, but it's not the point, because at the end of the day, it's supposed to be a budget smartphone, and we know that with budget smartphones there are a lot of corners cut. Uh, if you can buy this phone, the Doji X97 Pro, for around $100, I think it's not a bad choice actually could be a very good 2022 solution. If the price goes near $140, $150, I would say spend 40 bucks more, around 200 and buy yourself any of the new Poco M5 series, or maybe some of last year's Poco, Redmi, Realme, or other good budget smartphones. Um, if you look for something which is close to $100, if this is more expensive, then you can try the Redmi 9A, which we mentioned a bit earlier, having almost identical hardware, a bit better camera and larger battery capacity. And better software, I would say. So that's been everything about the Doji X97 Pro. Is it a hit or is it a miss? Let me know using the comment section below the video. As usual, link to the product, more information about how you can support the channel, and some good positive vibes you can find in the video description area. Thank you very much for being with me today. I'm Michael, wishes for a fantastic day and hope to see you soon. Bye!